We bring in on the Marksman Real Estate Hotline, Josh Ward of uh, Josh and Swain, which you can hear on our sister station, Sports Animal, WNML in Knoxville. Josh, good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Good morning. So um, before we get to the football side of it, I know you're never supposed to say this out loud when it comes to Tennessee sports <laughs> because everybody's waiting for the other shoe to drop. I just think they're the best team, and I think they're going to win a college World Series as a one seed, which hasn't been done since Miami did it in 99. Tell me why I'm wrong. Well, tell me if I'm wrong here in this thought. That stat that you just mentioned, I think a lot of people are starting to recognize it. It's crazy that mm -hmm. you have to go back to 99 for the top team to win. But you know who knows that stat? Tennessee. Yeah. We had Kirby Connell, the uh, Tennessee reliever, really good uh, reliever for Tennessee, volley fingers on the show yesterday. And he mentioned that that number. He knows it. So his teammates know it. Most teams, you'd be thinking, okay, is that going to affect them? Is the pressure going to get to them? Maybe the answer is yes. But this team, the way that they look for anything to find motivation, I could see this team saying, hey, it hasn't been done since 99. There's another reason for us to be focused and motivated to go win the national championship. No team should lack for motivation, especially if you're the number one overall seed to go win it. But most things that you would bring up, especially for the Tennessee fan base to worry about, uh, and, and I can't tell fans not to worry, but the players, I wouldn't worry about them. And with Tony Vitello as the head coach, yeah, he, he, he hasn't won it yet. But in, in terms of a guy that you would want to have the personality and to figure out ways to keep his team loose when they're going to have all this expectation and pressure, yeah, this, is, this team has the makeup, I believe, to go do it. Not to mention... They're really good. They're elite hitting. They're elite pitching. They don't have a real weakness. There are some areas where they can improve, sure, but uh, g good luck trying to find a way to beat this team twice, which you're going to have to do to get through them. Yeah, it just seems to be the way they operate and the way that they walk and swag and everything else. It's just like, yeah, it hasn't been done since 99 because we didn't play until 2022. It doesn't look like it's been this long. It looks mm -hmm. like, yeah, we came around. We would have done it back then, but we were too young, but we're going to do it now. They're, they don't walk. They're certainly not lacking in confidence in Knoxville. No, uh, and yeah, that kind of is – permeating through the athletic department, the university, and I think the fan base now. Like at, at this point, it's been brought up so many times how well things are going with Tennessee athletics that I don't think fans are worried about talking about it. You always be prepared for the cup check because it could come at any time <laughs> in Knoxville. But I think that Tennessee fans right now really believe in the leadership of the athletic department, the leadership from the coaches of different teams, and absolutely this Tennessee baseball team because – We've talked about it for weeks now with just this team that, okay, this team is really good. They're number one overall in the, in the country. They're a consensus number one for several weeks, and it never really seemed to affect them. They didn't win the series against Kentucky, but look at the way they responded after that series went against them. And then the, the never-been-done aspect, or, or it hasn't been done in a long time, talking about the number one overall winning the, the tournament for the first time in 23 years, with that being the goal. Well, we hadn't seen the same basketball team or the the basketball team from the same school as the baseball team and the soccer team win an SEC tournament until Tennessee just did it. So they're already accomplishing things that we haven't seen or haven't seen in a long time. So I think this Tennessee baseball team is going to say, why don't we check off one more box, go win it all and say, yeah, we're the number one overall team in the country all season long and we'll be, be the number one team at the end. The uh, Going back to the SEC tournament for the baseball team, the brackets and how they had to win games and who they played against, who were hot. LSU was hot at the time. Kentucky, man, I think had one of the best runs in the SEC tournament uh, of any team considering they couldn't wash their jerseys because they were playing back to back to back to back the way they did, and they finally ran out of pitching. And the same thing goes for Florida. Like you said, the, the battle-tested aspect of this baseball team going into – the uh, NCAA tournament, man, kind of speaks a lot of the way Vitello has gotten this group ready. And I'll say this, too, with the antics, they actually play the game the right way. I know Drew Gilbert had the sick bat flip, but putting all those things together, you got to say that their chances are better than most when it comes down to it, right? I agree. By the way, I thought Drew Gilbert's latest bat flip where he just walked down the baseline with it and then did kind of the mini flip because he was just holding it out for the dugout. A little disrespectful, but very well executed. I love that. <laughs> but but they they know what to do. You know, Jordan Beck gets on uh, first base. They walk the, the bases loaded. 
and Drew Gilbert is extra motivated by that. But I think also internally, like he'd had a couple of bats that hadn't gone his way, and right. he wanted to go up there and have a good at bat, and he did. And then the next uh, time up, he, he's able to hit it out of the park. These guys, they know what they're doing, and then the arms are just outrageous. I mean, the, it's not the depth. The depth is a big part of it. But the depth is filled with incredible talent. I mean, being able to bring in Chase Burns out of the pen, a guy that's probably a future first-round pick and would be a number one for a lot of teams in this NCAA tournament, and he's like an extra arm at this point for Tennessee because they've gotten healthier. And that was a lot of the conversation in the middle of the season when Tidwell was trying to work back his way back in, and then Dolander, they're trying to get him back in uh, after he was out for a couple of series. And there's, the, the conversation was, well, if they have all these arms, Mm-hmm. Good luck to everybody, and and that really is it. So you know, Florida tries to make a run late, so they bring in Connell, and then they have Redmond Walsh available. And you know, th- like this weekend, do we see Ben Joyce? I don't know. He's right. a guy that throws 104 miles an hour. So teams recognize that, and then you get to the hitting, and it's just it's an incredible combination. It's probably providing extra confidence to pitchers because they know that hey, if we give up a run or two, our bats have our back, and. The way they, they weren't really tested that much in the SEC tournament and they never trailed, it was another statement of what this team is capable of. S- sustainability of this, though. Uh, not just this year, the rest of the tournament, but for next year. Because we're watching a little bit of Vandy right now, too, and, and I got the most respect for Tim Corbin and everything he's done. But they're a product right now this year of losing two first-round draft picks at pitcher. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tennessee's going to end up losing some older guys this year, maybe Trey, Mike Honcho, Lipsius, just a bunch of guys probably to the draft. And you got to say to yourself, well, what's behind them? Can they do this again? Because this high road, as, as far as it goes, People will still wreck your car if, if you have a bad year the next year, considering you know how boastful they are. Yes, and uh, if that opportunity comes up, then Tennessee, more than any other program, the outside w- would love to pile on if it happens. One reason to be really confident is this is a, a coaching staff they might have to replace somebody. You know, Elender's going to get an opportunity, but uh, they're going to recruit at a really high level, so they will be able to replace the talent, I believe. Now, do you replace – leadership they kind of answered that maybe this year because you had somebody like evan russell come back and he he was next in line to help replace guys that left last year's team those guys that tony vitello was emotionally talking about after they beat florida on sunday so when russell's gone and gilbert's gone and beck's gone then it will be okay who's next to help lead the way but you have arms that you can point to okay well it's going to be um, it's going to be a chance for Beam in the rotation to kind of help lead the way and Burns to lead the way. And then in the lineup, Burke to help lead the way and Christian Moore. Those are really talented players. So now that they've already proven that they can play when they get more of an opportunity, assuming they develop, you hope that they picked up what these guys that are leaving uh, will, will have for them. And then more talent's coming. I also think Tennessee will be really attractive in the transfer portal every year. Not a bold claim, but uh, I think that that's going to be a pretty obvious way for Tennessee to fill holes, and then you just trust that Tony Vitello is going to be able to figure that out. It's the SEC, Vanderbilt, and Arkansas, and Ole Miss, I would think. These are programs that are going to respond in the next couple of years, but I would not have any fear if I'm a Tennessee fan of this program dropping off. Are they going to be this good every year? That's unrealistic, but an NCAA tournament team just about every year and a World Series contender just about every year, I think that's realistic. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you. Um, the meetings are happening in Destin. We mm-hmm. all know Jimbo versus Saban. That's going to be interesting when the game is played. Brian Kelly has come out and said, I took this job because I want to beat Nick Saban. It seems like some people are seeing blood in the water as it relates to NIL, and, and everybody is talking about it. And I read Andy Staples from The Athletic yesterday, and he was suggesting – we're getting further and further away from a universe where there's going to be a framework around this. Like it just seems like it's just going to continue to be murky and people are going to be then taking advantage of whatever they can take advantage of. Do you think we're going to get some kind of structure behind NIL or are they just going to kind of continue to wash their hands of all of this and whoever can take advantage of it's going to take advantage of it? Uh, I think for the foreseeable future, it's probably going to be more of that teams taking advantage. Tennessee's trying to take advantage of, the way it's structured right now, which is not very, and they've done a great job of that. At some point, I think we'll see some kind of regulation, if that's the right word. I mean, that, I think that's what we want to use. Um, the the big question is, does the NCAA try to come in and 
make an example of a program. You know, part of the issue there is that if if programs are doing this the way that they're supposed to in terms of how contracts are written up and agreements are done with NIL opportunities for players, well then, you know, how can you really and how much do they really want to? So I think the bigger picture conversation is, you know, what is the structure of just college athletics um uh, you know, with the, the power conferences, what do they end up doing? Does the SEC lead the way as part of the conversation this year is coming back to an SEC-only playoff to say, okay, we'll we'll do our own thing, and then you maybe look to the conference commissioner to help lead the way as opposed to an NCAA president to help lead the way. But you know, part of the issue is nobody has a real answer. Everybody's yeah. trying to figure this out because this has all happened so quickly. So it's truly a guessing game for everybody that's involved, from the NCAA to conference commissioners to coaches and different coaches handle things uh emotionally and uh, i think that's been on display here the last few months but uh blood in the water back to alabama i think people recognize that now i'd still be very careful with yeah, that me approach too. as long as, as nick saban's in the game because he has adapted before and i would still expect him to adapt again but it, it makes the um, the offseason conversation a lot more interesting and it may open up doors for some programs as long as they have the right kind of leadership to still figure things out. But I think that's the core of it. You still have to have the right kind of culture and you still have to have the right kind of people in place because once we get a year or two into this and you have some locker room conversations that can pop up, programs can be broken apart by this as well if they don't have the right kind of uh, – culture is the, the word that we all use. I've already used it here, but mm-hmm. I, I really do think it applies. If you don't have the right kind of structure to your program, then what you're able to do to get the players in is not going to really matter if you can't hold them all together. 